Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, back at it again. Hey, guys, first off, let me start by saying all the support. Guys, I y'all made my birthday so amazing. Like this was, I mean, my I was smiling grin to grin. Lost my voice yesterday, just going crazy. Y'all turned my birthday up 20 knots, and I can't do anything but say thank y'all for that. But tapping back in, guys, uh, I want to come in with our, our Sunday uh, recap, getting prepared for next week, guys. It's getting insane. And I not to jump and have people rash or getting overly excited, but this week upcoming, we're we going to see some stuff. The, the curtain's about to get ripped open. We're about to get see some real exposure and get deep and down into what is truly going on because I don't think that things can be held back any longer. I got some keynotes with a tap in at the end that are pretty crazy. And then, like I said, something else that I got to show you a banger at the end of the video. So let's get into this video right quick, a little quick snippet. Let's get down to it. In Fred Tomzik, <clears throat> former CEO of TD Ameritrade. Uh, Fred, Big boy. let's get your perspective for the investors at home, really. I mean, after years of really low rates, uh, where investors at home have been really just encouraged to buy stocks, we've got to get reintroduced. And, and note, guys, why I love to keep coming to these people. And this is dropped, um, I think, on Friday, this video. But where you're coming, you're hearing the sentiment from these retired CEOs. They ain't got nothing to lose. So they spill it out how it is. Same with the uh, Danny Blanche flower, where it's kind of like, just listen to the sentiment. We've already, we already know what's going on. But now it's just the fact that media is online just basically calling. Now, are we in some serious? To fixed income, corporate bonds, munis. What should, as we approach the end of the quarter, people be thinking about in their portfolios when it comes to balance in the face of all this volatility? I can't believe the quarter's about to fly through. Uh, well, I mean, I think, you know, if you stand back at the market and just look at where we are and all the uncertainties in front of us, we've got the Fed tightening from ultra-loose monetary policy for a long period of time, including some experimental uh, uh, quantitative easing being a bit experimental. We've never, I've never seen that in my career. So that's number one. Number two uh, is you're coming out of a period um, where, you know, they've got that Fed yes, tightening. You've got geopolitical uncertainties with the Russia-Ukraine war. You've got increased tensions with China. And you've got this banking crisis going on, uh, uh, which, you know, and banking does rely on confidence. So you've got all that going on. And on top of that, the Fed's now trying to run two tracks where it's trying to tighten monetary policy to deal with inflation. But it's also trying to loose, provide liquidity to the banking system. All that breeds is uncertainty. And I think for investors right now, they should be fairly cautious. So, Fred, give us the classic mistake. Out the gate, y'all. If you ain't seeing the writing on the wall, all we can do is bring our information. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Love what's going on in the comment section where we are able to have discussions. Whether you agree, you don't agree, we want that all in the comment section. That's what we need. But, guys, this is the second now former CEO. The last one was uh, was the uh, monetary policy maker at the Bank of England. This is this former CEO during 2008, 2016. So the guy knows something about some, some bad shit coming. He these just basically come out and, and saying, investors, you need to stay clear of the market right now. That's everything. Mistakes, maybe a couple classic huh? mistakes that investors at home, maybe active traders would tend to make in an environment like this and how we might guard against those? Well, I mean, it, it's, um, to me, it's a news-driven market because of what's going on today and, and all this stuff. It's a very news-driven market. Hyper. So unless you can predict what the news is going to be this afternoon or tomorrow, I, I think, you know, as a trader, you should make sure you can limit your risk. Don't start to take outsized positions. We used to say at Ameritrade, always know your downside and be, be willing uh, to make sure you're willing to tolerate that loss. So don't take extreme positions right now. And we can argue that what we've seen play out with the banking sector in recent weeks has really been a crisis of confidence, right? And that in, in itself has triggered these bank runs and led to a crisis of mm -hmm. liquidity. Uh, the next shoe to drop potentially, or I guess the actions are being taken so it doesn't drop, is First Republic Bank. When you see the FSOC meeting, Shoot, when you they see already Treasury toast. Secretary Yellen testifying Deutsch. as she did this week in, in front of lawmakers and saying what she's saying about, Fargo. about deposits and the commentary from Powell as well on the heels of the FOMC meeting, uh, does, it, does it actually staunch that crisis of confidence or, or is there potential for another shoe to drop? Well, I, you know, banking does rely on confidence, Ooh, right? and so I can't stress that you? enough. And anytime you have a loss of confidence in, in a bank, it's going to cause uh, potential issues for that bank. So, 
the um, bank is stocked like down 90 percent in the u.s the two banks that have gone down have had unique situations so it feels like it's over but you're never really sure because you don't know the you used to have a saying that you have your direct or primary exposure contagion secondary exposure, just say contagion your brother tertiary exposure which is much harder to see and so those things tend to play out over time so i don't think we know for sure guys you got to realize he put in a bunch of nice words every bank is tied in together that's one how they insure each other this fdic i know we have all these names dah, 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 but you should look at this as one massive organization with different sectors in different locations they're all the same thing one cannot go down just think about how something's triggered over here and then immediately the next day bank of england swiss bank i mean this is a this is past that level this is the first tier and these are the big banks how are we supposed how are you supposed to give me confidence that smaller banks are supposed to be all right in this but big banks getting smoked and y'all are literally saying hey we only gonna be able to save people that's too big to fail what is the i mean look at the sentiment but it definitely to me anyway the two banks that have gone down the u.s seem to be unique situations that you know sort of i want uh, to hear a badian speak ALM, i want to hear bad Silicon legal valley bank had weak alm i want to hear credit risk union management um and a lot of red flags that they ignored so hopefully they're isolated i think they're isolated but you don't know and we won't know for a while all right people power e trade Pause is up here hey listen I'm, I'm going into some keynotes and then i got a banger back here let me just pull this up on a chart just so we can have it up here guys holy hell we are at literally zero shares to borrow i don't think i've ever seen it actually show z completely zero shares we've got this going on along with glitches that have been sitting up here now for what is this day four or day three of showing the market cap in the 400 billions for amc at eight wait a minute at what point now just so y'all tell me in the comments now at what point are we going to all come together and say okay now it's fact like they if, if they don't have this fixed up by tomorrow if they don't have this fixed up by tomorrow that's no longer a glitch I already think it's that number. I think it's a little bit higher than that number, to be honest with you, because they've been doing this for two years. <laughs> but now we're finally seeing zero shares available. How do you have zero shares available to borrow with a short interest that's at 24%? Wait a minute, how is everything bought up? <laughs> Did somebody make that make sense to me now? How is there nothing? No shares are borrowed, but you can buy the stock right now. Hmm? All right. But anyways, let me just bring this back in here. All right. Uh, a couple keynotes, some bangerangers up here. All right. Starting off, the banking crisis continues to fold. And I, I told everybody, keep your eye on Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is what you're looking at next. Deutsche Bank, that bad boy goes. Y'all might well just call it a cookie. It's done. It's over with. It, uh, uh also keep an eye on wells fargo the reason i tapped in on this is because there's info that these two banks along with spd signature bank first republic which is what they're talking about that first public is done i mean that's toast y'all looking at y'all looking at banks on on the uh on the deathbed with the thing beep beep this is i mean these they're about to the flatline but first republic were all found on the list asked for government assistance right just prior to the bank collapse the name of this is called the Federal, oh, excuse me, let me see it, let me see it. Federal Home Loan and Savings Bank, right? And I think it's F H L B or something like that. But basically what this is, is a, a cognitive about 10, 11, 12, 13 mega banks that have come together to provide liquidity for banks. These banks that have collapsed prior to, I think it was, January 1st and then around December, the end of December, we're on that going and asking for loans. They're the highest askers of it. Wells Fargo was on that list. Signature Bank was on that list. SPB, First Republic is on that list. This is why I keep bringing back one. I already know Wells Fargo is toast, but Wells Fargo was on that list begging for money. They need liquidity. Guys, they're they snatching ATMs up out here in my city. 
uh, 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 I put this up here uh, again, like I already tapped on AMC is in April, still showing that 400 billion. Y'all keep note if that thing stays up there tomorrow, Monday, if that if that if it is still showing 400 million tomorrow, it's over with, guys. It's over with. This is literally, and these funds would take it to the grave. They're not going to say you got us. So if people are looking for a you got us, you're never going to get that. But when I'm telling you the knee is on the ground, y'all, proceed to put that knee down. Look, they, this this is this is it. This is what we wanted. You're starting to see this is the black swan event. I, you know, I'm not trying to get everybody robbed, but we just stick with the facts of the matter now. Let that thing be up there tomorrow. Let it be up there tomorrow. I'm telling you now. Cinnamon is going on, on, on a run. Uh... Uh, quick tap in with Swiss Bank. Guys, Credit Suisse um, just had $17 billion worth of uh, 81 bonds written off. And I'm about to go and explain real quick what 81 bonds are and the options that you can do with those, two, those bonds. This, again, has caused a panic because now people that are holding 81 bonds are are watching their price go down, which is further causing more investors because investors now have been told they're not being secured. If you are invested in a bank or, 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 or some type of financial market, you are not back. They have told everybody that, oh, even over there in Swiss Bank, you're anybody that is a, 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 a shareholder or a creditor is not getting any of their money back. What type of news is that to come out over the weekend and why are y'all talking like this? What, why are y'all talking like this? But nonetheless, I came down here uh, uh, um, just to explain what 81 bonds are. So an uh, 81 bond is a $275 billion sector known as contingent convertibles or cocoa bonds, right? They act as a shock absorber if a bank's capital falls below a certain threshold. They can be either converted into equity, right? The bonds can be converted to equity so the bank has money or they're written off, right? They want to use the term written down because they just want to say they're writing it off. They made it disappear. Guys, now make this make sense to me. But does that not literally mean that they didn't even have the money to be able to switch that back in for equity? So they just made the, the amount of money that they owe just disappear? Wait a minute. What type of math is that? What, how can you do that? Which is now just sending ripples off because now other people that are holding these 81 bonds are sitting up here like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> people are rushing in, trading their bonds, and they're cashing out. They're moving out of these banks. Guys, we're, this bank run thing is past. Markets, market's going to a collapse. Bank run is past. You've got now multiple cases. Janet Yellen, j Powell, even over there in England, Swiss Bank saying, hey, guys, if you're invested, you're screwed. If you're a, uh, a creditor, you're screwed. Even if you're a depositor, you're screwed. <laughs> like, there's not enough money, even on my uh, video previously for, and appreciate all the love on these videos, guys. I love y'all. But even on the uh, other video, Danny Blanchard basically said, hey, we, there's not enough money in the world to ensure every bank around the world going down. America goes down. America's banking system going down is taking all the money. Vice versa, England. Vice versa, if this were happening in Russia, I mean, there is a, there's never expectation for this worldwide of an event to occur. Guys, there is no preparation for this. They're not ready for this. I got a, a couple key last notes in here. Um, uh, current cost to borrow. As you can see up here, guys, this is another thing I want to show. Come down here. Y'all, March 23rd. Look at this now. Look, this is the... March 23rd, their last few shares they've been borrowing, they've been borrowing at 214% cost to borrow rate. Now there is literally no shares available. Now, we've been doing this a long time. These bastards never show a weak point. Ken Griffin hair turned gray. He was silly. Yes, everything's great. Why are we seeing real numbers coming out? Go in the comments. Somebody explain to me, y'all. Y'all tell me why we are seeing real numbers come out right now. 
Why? Why is it somebody just make it? Maybe it's just coincidence. It's not, hey, it could be just coincidence, right, guys? But explain to me again how we're in the middle of bank crisis. The money's dried up. We've known that they just had infinite money to keep making in infinite shorts. Immediately, as soon as the money dries up, banks start going down. Fund, funds start. Numbers start coming out. Hey, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it where it lies with that right there, guys. But I'm going to tell you like this. I wrote down here in big letters. Everybody needs to buckle the hell up. I repeat, this is not a drill. We in a tournament. This March Madness, this top four. Uh, guys, we asked for this. Everybody, get prepared. This ain't the time to be playing around. Every single morning, you need to be up when the birds are creeping at 4 a.m. I'm just saying, you need to be up at 4 a.m. Checking and monitoring this. If you're overextending stuff, pull back. You, it is never a bad thing to have some money sitting on the sideline and be in in and in, in be in a position in these places where if something goes sideways, you're good. We are going into the abyss with it right now. We're going into the great unknown. This is unmarked territory. They couldn't plan for this. They couldn't uh, front run this. This is a square up 1v1. This is what we wanted. We wanted retail, all the retail, to be able to call straight hell. And that's what's going on right now. We are right here looking straight in your face. And now people, we're at a point where I feel it too, where it's kind of like you're shocked. We're sitting up here like, is this, is this happening? Is, is this really, did they really make a game of Russian roulette on their own and lose the game of Russian roulette? Did they, did they run a, 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 a suicide mission with the global economy for, for ups, for money? There's no way. Hey guys. Here it is. It's printed right in front of y'all. But guys, like I said, I appreciate y'all for tapping in. Hey, we're gonna have more content coming this week, guys. This week, I'm telling you now, I'm all I, it's the the belts, the the buttons are popping up off of this shirt. The buttons are popping. It's filled with too much crap up under there. Pop. I mean, it, it, you take these keynotes in. Go look at all the previous videos I posted. We've been linking this together day by day. Next week is gonna un unravel something. Next week, something's gonna break. Something big is gonna break. Something break, something's breaking next week. They can't hold this. They can't contest. This. There's no upside to look at right now. And all I'm watching is now even further out. Other countries are going sideways. Swiss bank. Uh, oh, this uh, all the Swiss banking system might be up in, in flames. To be honest with you, they are they're trying to give Credit Suisse away, and they can't get UBS to buy it. They, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are giving a bank away, y'all. They can't get somebody to take it. They are, listen, hey, we'll write all those off. We're just going to write, we're going to write those bad bonds. They, and UBS is still trying to run for the hills. They getting a bank that was a $7 billion bank with $2 billion, $3 billion with guaranteed bailouts. With all, with, with bonds being written off. They get, nobody can take it. That thing is so bad, y'all. Hey, but listen, I appreciate y'all boys. Stay tapped in. Thank y'all so much for all the birthday wishes. Y'all turned my birthday up 39 notches. Guys, we're bringing it harder. We're going to bring it faster. Um, Hey, what we have here, like I said, we've always known this is a movement, but what we're trying to create over here is a retail hub. Y'all use that comment section like we did on last video. If you disagree, say it. Put it down. This ain't no spot where you're going, oh, I'm going to take your comment. No, put what your comment is. If we disagree, people going to comment on it. If you agree with other people's comments, comment. But this is where we I, I, we need to be sentiment. Everybody's got to be lining in now. We've got a window of time that's coming up for us to get our hits. This is, we're getting our licks back. It's time. It's about to be time to cash up. But everybody needs to be in full accordance of what's going on. No man left behind. Everybody needs to be fully educated what's going on. And then whatever decision you make with your boat is the decision you make with your boat. But our, our job, especially retailers, make sure everybody's informed and everybody is up. We ain't doing no in the dark playing now now we all up in it we we right next to him oh yeah no 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 i i know what that is hey hey y'all stay up more videos to come love y'all boys all right hold it down hold it down